Once you have a region marked, you may copy that entire region, which includes all of the note data, as well as the velocity data, and any controls we might have manipulated. You may copy that region by holding control and just dragging the mouse to a different location. Now, that's a very simple way to produce uh, blocks or patterns of music. If you have a pattern which you would like to have repeated over your entire course of sound, for example, let's uh, take this Dr. Rex. This Dr. Rex unit is a great way for you to start with a, a basic drum pattern. Let's listen to it by hitting preview. Now, I like that. If I were to make any changes to it, I might want to do them before we do this uh, operation. For example, if you want to filter out um, to keep the low frequencies or the high, or, you know, depending on the uh, drum pattern that we, we choose, we might want to manipulate some things. Generally, you want to keep an ear for whether or not the pitch of these drums is actually harmonious with the pitch of the instrument and, in general, the song that we're working with. Now, there's a button here that says to track, and that is going to send our MIDI notes to the track. And it's only going to send the MIDI notes for the region that we have set as a loop point. You're going to have to become very familiar with these loop settings. Basically, at the bottom it says it's going to, whenever it encounters bar 13, which is this right bar, it's going to loop back to bar 9, which is our bar marked with an L. Now you can play with the controls down here. Alternatively, you can hold control and click in the header, these numerical positions here, to set a loop point. And that's for the left. You press control and hold alt and click somewhere in the region to set your right loop point. Now, I've got these four bars set for Dr. Rex. I'm going to highlight them all using my selection tool just by drawing a box around them. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to drag them four bars to the right. Very simple. Now, if I wanted to stagger a bar, for example, by half a bar or a quarter, if this icon is highlighted, it's going to restrict my motions to within that interval. In this case, I can move in quarter bar increments, but I cannot move in any finer degree than that. So, if I wanted to move very finely, have very precise control, I might choose something like 1 32nd. And you can see right now that it gives me very fine control over my placement. And it's also very likely that I may create an error by uh, missing by 1 32nd of a note. And that's enough to make your drum pattern really sound terrible. So, I'm going to leave it set, as, set at bar. That's only going to allow me the freedom to move within basically this much distance. And if I move it back and forth, I know I'm not going to miss my spot. This is what's called quantization. To quantize means to align your notes based on musical intervals. In this case, either a bar, a quarter of a bar, an eighth of a bar, a sixteenth of a bar, but it's always based on the tempo. It's never based on the actual time that it takes to play a note. It's based on a rhythmic attribute of music. Quantizing your music will help to correct any type of timing inaccuracy which results from playing with the keyboard. For example, you, you cannot be expected to hit every note right on the millisecond. So quantization will help us with that and correct for any you know, defects in our, in our rhythmic timing. If we look at these bars right now, or if we look at these notes and zoom in on them using this bar at the bottom, you notice it has a uh, sort of a logarithmic scaling ap appearance to it, and that's exactly what it does. It will allow us to scale our um, edit view until we get exactly what we want to see. And we may have to resize some things to take a look at things. If you notice, every single beat, every single note, within this Dr. Rex pattern falls within a 1 16th and that's fine that's a that's a great way to do a drum pattern typically 1 16th is the um,
probably the finest drum pattern. I'm not, I don't mean finest in the way of saying the best, but it's the most, how do I say, the most detailed rhythmically. Um, you would typically only go past that into the one thirty second if you were doing something like a triplet, where you might have two notes that play very quickly after each other, like a snare roll or something like that. Anyway, these, the next set of buttons right here are, are quantized functions. The first two settings right here, this one, our dro first drop down menu and this magnet will affect whether or not we can manipulate with the mouse outside of our quantizing area. The second set is going to affect whether or not we can actually play our instrument within that range or outside of that range. Now here's what I'm going to do to demonstrate this. Uh, let's take our first bar of music. I'm going to go into record mode. And we're playing the subtractor right now. If I were to play it like this, just as it is, and I'll just make some noise here, you'll see that every note appears exactly where I pressed it. No correction at all is necessary or has been performed. If I choose my quantization to be a half of a bar, and if I enable for the recording process using this button right here, watch what happens when I do the same thing. Here we go. You can see the difference, can't you? It stacked all my notes to exactly one half bar. And if we look at it within, this, this box changes our grid view. At one half bar, we'll see that all my notes are perfectly aligned. And they play simultaneously like a chord, whereas my first set was more of a sweep. So depending on your playing style, type of music that you're using, you'll have to adjust your quantization and your grid preference to suit. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It all depends on the type of effect you're, you're working with and how precise you would like your notes to be rhythmically. Let's go back to the arrange mode and take a look at our instruments. So we know how to play an instrument and if I were to create another instrument for example a, a sampler and I'll just load up a quick patch here for example a guitar by default the last instrument you create will automatically be assigned <coughs> MIDI preference and that just means that it's already selected in our sequencer track view when you press the key you should see a green bar appear over this keyboard that lets you know that a MIDI signal has been received. But it doesn't have to be a key. For example, I have a knob here which affects my filter frequency. And you see that it also, not only does it up change the knob in real time, but it shows a green indicator which lets me know that a MIDI signal is coming through. If I were to play and manipulate the knob at the same time, it will record that knob movement and you can see it move in front of us the frequency knob moves from bottom to top now unfortunately with this particular patch it doesn't do anything and I can change that by adjusting the, our frequency now you can hear the difference um, filter frequencies are a bit more technical I don't want to get into those right now um, that'll probably be in a later tutorial but at this point we have the basic structure of how to start off creating music with reason. I know how to take a basic drum pad and assign it to a sequence of tracks so that we can control it and so that we can actually see where these drums are going to hit throughout the entire piece and we can also see where our subtractor is going to hit. Now if I change the instrument that this, or the patch that the subtractor is playing does not affect my notes. In fact, I can manipulate any setting on the subtractor and it will not affect any of the information in our sequencer. Now that's a great way to do it. If you have a melody in your head, play the melody first and then try to find the instrument or the settings which best suit what was in your head. Now, let's talk about